Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins weekly meeting for the infrastructure team, SIG team. So first of all, happy new year. That's the, uh, at least for me, I know that some of you already saw each other last week, uh, but that's the first time. So uh, I'm happy to start a new year and I wish the best for the upcoming month to everyone. So we are the 10th, the 10th of January, 2023. Today, around the table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Waite, Stefan Merle, Bruno Verraton, and Kevin Martins. We are our six. Um, anything to say before we get started? Nope, okay. Let's start with the announcements. Uh, first of all, the release 2.386, if I'm correct. Uh, I haven't checked the status of the weekly release. It's it's uh, done, but we're waiting for the Docker image. Oh, cool. Okay, so it's done. Packages. Next step, Docker image. And let's check these items. Anything else about the weekly release? It includes an important change to, but you don't have to put anything in the notes. Mm -hmm. the, there's a valuable change in there for users running the WMI Windows agent plugin. They'll now be able to uninstall it without having to remove their ancient uh, other ancient plugins. Nice one. Thanks for that info and for the job, the hidden job behind that, Mark. Do you have other announcements? None from me. None there. Uh, just a big thank, uh, a big thanks to Stefan and Mark for running the weekly meeting last week, by the way. I'll take care of uh, publishing notes and and recording uh, with this one uh, let, later today or tomorrow. Uh, let's have a look on the upcoming calendar. So next week we will have next weekly, like every week. Um, the, that will be the 2.387. Uh, we will be Tuesday, 17th of January. Important note to everyone, tomorrow is LTS release day. So the Jenkins LTS version 2.375.2 will be released and published tomorrow. Uh, I understand that Chris Stern is the release lead that time. Um, our infrastructure uh, uh, on-call duty persons to help Chris during the, the release will be Hervé Lemer and Stefan Merle. Both of them will be there to be to support Chris if everything happens. We should not have an issue, but we never know. Um, yeah. Yes, so I assume it will start early in the day, assuming that Chris is still based on in Asia. Correct. And Alex Brandis has also agreed to assist. Alex ah, actually cool. has permissions to launch the build. So he confirmed in governance meeting on Monday that he's willing to launch the build as well. So uh, that that should make it simple for the infra team. If Alex launches the build, he tends to launch them relatively early in the day. And, but mm -hmm. by all means, check with him to see if he, if he needs help or if by nine or 10 your time, you have not seen a build start, it's worth asking because you're right, Chris Stern is in Asia. So his time zone is quite different from, from mine, for instance. Cool. Good to know. Um, so I won't be really available on my side tomorrow, except asynchronously. So that would be a nice test for both uh, for everyone. But yeah. uh, any case, call me, and uh, I should be able to to park somewhere and open the computer. Uh, next security release uh, known uh, announced on the mailing list. I've added the link for. Uh, to his our browsing in the future. 
And the two next major events that I know are will be the FOSDEM, 4 and 5 February in Brussels, um, and DEVOX France, uh, 2013 and 14 April of 2023 in Paris. Uh, I, uh, yes, 12 to 14. Uh, thanks. Uh, I know that at least uh, one, eventually two person on that room will submit bird of feather, which are kind of informal discussion uh, on a topic uh, that lasts one hour usually, that are end of day, I think the 13th or 14th. It's on Thursday, months. yeah, Thursday night. So it's a kind of gathering of people asking person it's not a let's say a formal presentation it's more round table uh one will be around mobile is that correct bruno yeah uh yeah mobile and uh, jenkins uh, the other one will be about building for embedded hardware and or building on exotic hardware uh, with jenkins nice and uh, Hervé is working on the Jenkins, uh, a simple Jenkins bird of feather. So that will be a discussion for any panel or any people interested. Uh, I will assist Hervé on submitting that topic, but Arnaud Eriti confirmed that we can submit one. Any major event or calendar elements that you have in mind, folks? No? Okay, let's proceed. Um, a few issues done during the past week. Uh, nice job uh, on this one, because especially we were still in holidays or coming back. Uh, first of all, general availability of uh, Windows Server 2022. Uh, so thanks, Stefan, for the work involved here. Um, so that's uh, that allows developers on CI Jenkins IO to use a new label Windows 2022 if they seek to build on a machine or using specific containers uh, tested manually by Stefan. So we have pinged the person who requested a, such an image on, I think it's Jenkins controller Docker image. Uh, so I've pinged them if they want to continue or we will take care of any maintainer. But on the infrastructure side, it's closed. We are going to improve the support of Windows 2022 uh, with the next Packer image version. But now we have some available on CI Jenkins IO, so we consider that issue closed. Any question? We, we will add uh, agents on AWS too, but now it's only exactly. on... Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the for the detail. Good point. Uh, duplicate profile. I don't know which issue it was. So okay. So thanks, survey and Mark. I remember. So someone had an issue with their account. So thanks for solving the that issue. Is there anything uh, something to say on this one, Mark or Hervé? I believe we have one more step, or at least I haven't deleted the account, the second account the user created. And I think that would probably be a healthy thing to do unless someone objects to that. Looks good to me. You're right. So I, okay. we can't combine the profiles, but as far as I can tell, the user's original profile had two issues, one or two issues reported in issues.jenkins.io the new profile seemed to have no act activity on issues.jenkins.io. So I didn't th don't think by deleting the new account, we would lose any content for the user. And they okay. are not a plugin maintainer, so they're not uploading anything to repo.jenkinsci.org. Okay. Uh, are you at ease with uh, doing that operation, Mark? Or... I, I am. If, if others don't mind, I'll just do it right now. Okay. So I'm adding it to the next milestone and we will close then. Uh, if, if you do it, no, sorry. Let's keep it on current milestone. It's It should be closed. Can I let you close that issue once it's finished? Yes. Cool, thanks. Okay, next one, renew digital ocean personal access token. So uh, thanks everyone, Stefan, for managing this one. Uh, 
so to summarize, we have a technical personal access token, a technical account related on Digital Ocean because they don't have the concept of an app like a GitHub app. So since we need to generate this token, uh, we need a technical account which doesn't have access to billing or administrative areas. And that token is renewed every 19 days. So we had to renew it. It expired uh, last Monday. We had alerting system that went very well. So we were able to renew it. Uh, it was documented on the issue. The only problem we are having here uh, is that I'm the only one able to log in to that account because of the MFA, because it's on my app and we cannot add a multiple MFA system like we would on GitHub. So I'm not really sure which road to take from there, uh, removing the MFA or eventually ask DigitalOcean if we could use email-based uh, token, a bit like uh, Zoom. what Zoom is doing. So each time someone logs, there is a, a, co uh, a numeric code sent to the email. So that will be an MFA. Um, I wasn't able, so uh, if it's okay for you, I will ask that to the DigitalOcean support, explaining our use case because maybe they have uh, something for that problem, to solve that problem. But right now, I've added the password of the account on one password, as a, that's a good point, a good request from Hervé. But I'm still the, the only one having the MFA uh, on that part. I've documented the fact that I'm only one on the issue and on one password as well. Any question? Archive Git Jira component. So I assume someone with Jira admin access was able to archive this component. Yes, Tim did it. Thanks, Tim. Okay, so we are our for um, uh, for Lemont. Hervé, are you the person who added the close as not planned? Yes. I've uh, modified the GitHub action to generate the implementing notes and okay. I've added this category as uh, it's issue yep. we can just uh, list and go on. Yep. yep. Yeah, good to see if we don't have false negative there. Good point, thanks. Okay, so account issue as usual. Okay. I'm going to switch to the work in progress. For each issue, we have to decide if we are able to work on it on the next iteration or if we should move back to backlog. Uh, don't forget that we will have new items. Uh, first one, account.jenkins.io admin access for Stefan Merle. Thanks for opening the issue, Stefan. Um, I haven't checked yet. Uh, but the goal is to track the fact that if we need to add you to the Jenkins admin and grant you way more powers, that it has to be validated by a collegial discussion. Uh, so I will take care of this one. I need. To, I just want to check how can we administrate both key cloak and account Jenkins IO. Uh, it sounds like it's not the same mechanism. So interesting to check. Uh, in any case, I, I'm, I'm okay for giving you these uh, accesses. It sounds like uh, Mark and Tim validated. So I will ask a bit more members, but yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, so. I, I think it's, to me at least, it seems obvious that if you can access Keycloak, you clearly should have enough permissions to also be an account administrator on accounts.jenkins.io. Key cloak is behind the firewall, right? If I remember right, or it's inside the VPN and therefore all sorts of privileged. Yes, thing is if my memory is not betraying me, that's the opposite problem. In order to be recognized as administrator in accounts Jenkins IO, you must be on some specific LDAP groups. Mm -hmm. And these groups Should gives mean... you other powers. Ah, okay. So your concern is, uh, I, I, that's that's very sensible. It, and I, I don't have any concern about uh, Stefan being given these powers. I just want that we audit these powers and it's clear to everyone which kind of powers it gives to Stefan. And if everyone acknowledge, including Stefan, once we know, then we can add him. I might be wrong. 
That's great. I've, I've took a look at uh, the run book entry uh, for accounts to mm -hmm. check the group. And I saw the table listing all of them and some notes. Uh, we might want to do something about it since a lot of them are, I'm not sure, I don't know, not used. So yeah. Okay, so I, I will look at the run books and check that part then. Cool. Any question? No, we're good. Okay. Next issue. Uh, old inbound agent published as latest. Um, so yeah, we still have that recurring issue on trusted CI Jenkins IO, where some of the jobs, but not all, are not behaving as expected. That's a word bug that we can't understand. The jobs are configured to ignore tags that are older than three or six days, and it builds tags that are two years old. And this, uh, this once built, this tag keeps overriding the latest tag on the images on the Docker Hub. Um, I took the time earlier today to explain the battle plan I got in mind. Uh, the idea right now, so that problem was fixed by the new release we did yesterday of the images. You have a new release, you build a new tag, and latest is again overwritten. Um, I would say most of the time, someone using the latest tag is uh, is really at EDH. So you let's say friends don't let friends use latest. However, it can still be, uh, it's still a problem. So my proposal is to first uh, archive the current jobs that we have on trusted CI, back them up directly on the file system of the virtual machine and have an archive somewhere, like in the big archive bucket encrypted part that Hervé created last month. Then we disable, meaning we delete the job once backed up, now we check the, the, back, the backup and create again free multi-branch jobs instead of a GitHub organization scanning with a list of free jobs. Uh, I mean, free configuration is acceptable, even manually managed. The goal is to be sure that we start with a clean state. And to demonstrate that, we'll, we should see during the initial scan that only the tags released yesterday will be rebuilt and overriding on the Docker Hub. That will be the demonstration that the issue was something because this is an old job with a bunch of config XML that were upgraded during years. Uh, I think it has been created in 2015. So let's say gut feeling that something in the XML might be wrong or an a word bug with the GitHub organization scanning. So the goal is to have less moving pieces and we control each of these three jobs. The backup is if anything goes wrong, we don't lose the build history. That's really important because this is deep audit log for deployment of images. We need that build history anyway. Finally, on long term, um, so we have an issue that I will talk about later, but um, we should move this, um, these jobs from trusted CI to release CI, at least the job mentioned on 2845, which build the Jenkins official Docker controller image. Uh, we have to discuss if the three jobs mentioned on that issue for the Docker agent images should be moved on release CI as well. Are there official release Jenkins assets? Are there something else? Um, we, we have that discussion that should happen. The benefits of doing that is that it will enable us to manage as code the job configuration like we do on Infra CI. But that's long term. Uh, is there anyone volunteering to do that with me assisting or no one is interested and I take it, I don't mind. I am uh, to Rupert Doc and see uh, how you handle that, if you, if you agree. Yep. Okay. There, uh, there isn't any voice against considering that as a really important, not emergency, but really important. So we should do it during next uh, milestone. Yeah, I, I certainly find the it very distracting to have the the latest image go back in time. I agree with mm -hmm. you, friends. Don't let friends use latest, but there are there are use cases where latest sometimes helps and. 
we don't want it broken in any case. And we do use the latest. Do we? Not, not for not. the not for the agent, for the for the controller. So sometimes later is good. No, we are. Not. We are using LTS. Yeah. Not yeah. late for the controllers. Not not for. Oh, sorry. Yes. That that's the latest pattern, but it's not exactly the latest tag. That's well, and I hope even there we're calling out an explicit version number. But if we aren't, mm. we will be in the future. Not on CI Jenkins IO because uh, uh, security advisory process requires to be quick, and right now we are stuck with the latest. There is an okay. issue open about that. All right. Okay, next issue is CI Jenkins IO move ACI remaining workload to Kubernetes. Mm. I'm not sure why this it was uh, uh, yeah, it was an old issue without any milestone. So I figured uh, we had on the current one. Okay, so the goal of the scope of that issue will be to create a new node pool on at least one of the Kubernetes cluster, add that node pool or new cluster with Windows agents on CI Jenkins IO, migrate the pod, the ACI template to pod templates there, and finally remove the ACI usage. Um, I propose to put that back to the backlog or remove milestone. I don't see a, yeah, no a reason problem. to do it uh, right now, but uh, please challenge me. <laughs> no problem for putting in on the next or yep. removing the milestone. Yeah. Is that if okay for you to put it on backlog? Yes. G given your intent was to not lose that issue somewhere on the black hole. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But somehow this is a new black hole. But <laughs> Thanks, Hervé. Um, exclude non-numeric plugin version from update center. Mm. Oh, I oh, know. Yeah. Uh, so I wonder. Yeah, okay, so it's a good thing that uh, that issue was open on the L desk because it's tracked uh, properly. I'm not sure the infra team should be responsible uh, for that part unless no one at all takes care, but I don't feel like that I have the skills for handling that one, right? Uh, I'm wondering if these are recent release or old one uh, staying uh, in the existing uh, list. Yeah, the, my question is not just, what is yeah. the problem. My question is, yeah, yeah. is that a problem that I we understand. should understand. solve? Yep. Uh, I'm not really sure. I know that Daniel Beck will accept pull requests to update center to the repository. And that seems like the place where this would have to be made. I don't know that we're the ones who have to make it. I think that was what you were asking, Damien, right? Because this yes. seems like it's a a change in a in a pattern that Daniel may just simply reject and say, "No, I'm sorry, we are allowed to have whatever version string you wish." And, and um, reject. Go ahead. What do you think about moving that issue to the update center repository itself? to help scoping it and to put it under Daniel's radar. Yeah, yeah but if Daniel rejects it, it will be an issue for the plugin sites. So either we move this issue mm. from repo to repo, or either we ping Daniel on it, okay. explaining well, why. Then, update point. Center 2 doesn't have GitHub issues enabled, and I'm pretty sure Daniel doesn't. If he wanted them enabled, he would enable them. So, okay. so, so I don't think we can, we, we just need to talk with him about it. I think more than move the, move the, the help desk issue. And if yeah, Daniel yeah. says no, then, then it may be that Gavin Mogan wants to consider putting something on the plugin site to remove these odd, odd version numbers. Yeah. A, a, mm -hmm. A release version N is not a particularly interesting version, right? Nor is a release version right. Y. 
Fair. Um, the, your, both of you are making good points. Um, Hervé or Mark, can one of you take the lead on this one and ping both Daniel and Gavin? Or are you sure? Okay let let me let me start the comments in that in that help that help desk ticket that cool. way because, because then, it's it's yeah. really not something that that as an infra team we should we should fix. It's rather we're just coordinating a, a conversation mm -hmm. between two people that that uh, groups that yep. might fix it. Yep. But as, as stated by Hervé, we are still having the umbrella of the help desk and multi repository. So somewhere we still have a foot on that area and a, a voice on the matter. So and to, let's keep it then. Uh, both of you are making good arguments on that point. Thanks, Mark. And, and that was 3317. Thank you. Okay, got it. I've assigned to, to you, Mark. If you don't have the time, uh, uh, we will take take care of taking this one next week. It's still a bit early for my brain uh, being back from holidays to fully process the intent of this one. So that's why I'm asking for uh, other lead. So I've added that to the next milestone. Thanks. Blocked from creating a new account in the anti-spam system. I think this one is waiting for an answer from the user. Oh, no. No. I didn't find this is uh, made in. Uh, yes. The, I mean, I couldn't. Yeah. So that makes sense that his email, there is no account associated because if the anti spam system is triggered, um, I'm not sure. There are code paths where the account is created and somewhere it is not. Both code paths lead to the that message. So we have to check the logs of the application. It was last week, so I guess it might be lost already. So we should retry creating a new account in his name and while watching the accounts, the Jenkins IO logs to see uh, if there is any logs that could help. I don't mind taking that one unless someone is interested. Okay. Um, so next milestone, uh, sorry, next issue, recuperar la contraseña. This is blue espanol. And um, you sound, you sound actually quite authentic. Um, so that one is that that's the one waiting for a feedback from the user. Is that, is that correct? Correct. There was never a response to my email. And so okay. uh, without a response to the email that there's no evidence that the, that the person who submitted this is in fact in control of that account. Right. So I think yeah. it would be very dangerous for us to act on this request when we, mm -hmm. we haven't confirmed the, the one path we know they must have control of the email. They don't. Yep. Uh, is there any voice again, since it was one week ago, is there any voice against closing as not planned with a message to the user? We keep it closed unless you answer to the email. I think that's good. Okay. Uh, let's discuss during weekly team meeting. Closing as no answer from the user. Feel free to reopen by answering to the mention. Okay. So that one move to closed as not planned. Am I am I understanding it correctly, Harvey? Yep. Next issue that's listed since uh, before Christmas. Um, we had changes on Terraform AWS uh, EKS module. Uh, we had to recreate a cluster. That issue tracks all the changes that had to be done to recreate the ACP instance at repo AWS Jenkins IO. Uh, last step is that the uh, Let's Encrypt certificate is not generated. 
because Let's Encrypt uh, received an authentication error when trying to retrieve the challenge, the HTTP challenge. I'm not sure why it worked before uh, when uh, during the first attempt of Hervé. Uh, my guess is that there is something weird on the N Nginx ingress. So first solution will be to switch to DNS challenge that should be uh, easier. Uh, but there are issues uh, on that area, security, uh, let's say concerns, not issues. Um, but yeah, we have to, to put that back. I propose uh, that one, anyone interested can work on it. It's not top priority because right now we have to finish the private network and migrate everything unless someone object. The reason is because the only service which it's concerned, Repo AWS Jenkins IO, we are not using it right now because of a whole chain of events uh, where the root cause is the Azure Roots uh, network. So I propose to move this one to the, the backlog and anyone interested can look at the ingress and see what is happening. Any voice against that or anyone interested to force on that or something I could have forgotten? Okay. Next one, Netlify site for Jenkins IO components. That issue was opened by Gavin right before Christmas. Sorry, Gavin, we weren't able to handle this one. Uh, that's a request to track a Netlify si uh, site. There are some additional steps to be done. Is there anyone interested to assist Gavin on that part or should I take it? One, two, three, no volunteer. Uh, so, sorry, I take it, but, yeah, I can take it, but uh, yeah, I'll take it. I'll ask you okay. questions. Later. Yes, I can assist uh, if needed. Okay. Uh, Netlify. And GitHub. No. Uh, I haven't removed 3H and it's for the next uh, milestone. Cool, thanks Hervé. Uh, some Jenkins mirror are using the wrong media type. Uh, I didn't have time to, to use this one, uh, to make this one. It's a puppet change on Apache configuration. Uh, that one is not emergency. Anyone interested can help, but it's not top priority. I propose to move it back to the backlog and uh, anyone, including myself, uh, can work on it uh, later. Okay, for you? The yes. reason why I'm putting is that there might be a conflict with the Puppet Apache module. We haven't updated since uh, at least uh, one trimester because it's breaking tests and elements. So we should be careful on updating this one because that one could expose uh, sensitive areas on the virtual machines, especially pkg.jenkins.io. We don't want the, these services to be broken. Okay, mirror stat, wrong results. Same, I'm not sure why it's on the current milestone. Okay, we keep moving it from milestone to milestone. The goal is to update the status of some mirror, mirror uh, results. Okay. Um, Hervé, is it okay if I take it? It's only documentation. I move it to next milestone. Actually, I don't think it's... I, I had assumed it was more than documentation because the status page itself reports oh, correct. servers we don't expect. But on the other side... I don't know that this is valuable enough for us to spend any time on it. We've got other things that are much higher priority. If we were to just drop it and say, we're not going to do it for now, I don't feel any any guilt at that at all. I think it's perfectly okay to say, we're just going to accept this is reality and we're not going to put it in the, our current work. We've got other things that are higher priority. Yep. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah, I would have tried to enable them with uh, the line command. It's just four line command. Even if not 
uh, going anywhere, uh, doing not uh, anything more, but just that to see if there are errors or not. Yeah, but well, and, and we know that ftp.belnet.be is offline, and we know that Cerberion is if uh, is offline. Those two we know are offline. Uh, Aliun.com is actually online, and they had wanted to engage with us but we we didn't have we didn't at the time and then they stopped responding okay. so uh, i mean no objections if we do it for me it just was it's not as urgent it's not as pressing as some of the other things on our list okay yeah the, the survey on one is worrying me i don't try to experiment on this one because the four last time we tried to put it back online we ended up with uh, issues from users and quite right. some issues where the people were trying to download files and it was breaking their downloads. Especially with an LTS coming tomorrow, I will advise against playing a run with the mirror during one or two days around the LTS. I like that. I like that kind of conservative approach. Thank you. Um, but uh, Hervé, no problem to plan it for next iteration then, if it's okay for you. I can wait. Yeah. Um, okay, proposal, counter proposal. We contact the person in charge of the four mirrors. So first, we dig on the history associated to the four mirrors that we can get on the mailing list and the issues. We check the contacts if we have some from the run books, and we contact the administrator to ask them if they are still willing to to provide these mirrors, especially the uh, the Belnet and Serverion one. So, so they they've already responded to us and said no, they're not. Oh, uh, Belnet. I, I, yes, when you look in the history, I think you'll find both of them have said no. We're no longer able to host. I know Serverion oh. was. And okay. I thought so, that the others had said no. They aren't willing to host, and our status page is just incorrectly showing unwilling participants in the list, but not contributing. Okay, so that means we. We just have to double check, uh, so to link, uh, uh, to add any link on the issue that uh, that points to the history, that will be an argument to remove these two from the list. Is that okay for you, Hervé, to take this one? Okay. Um, don't forget what I said about the LTS, because if you, if you remember correctly, last time we cleaned up and removed the mirror, there was a few minutes of unavailability and HTTP 5.0 errors. So removing this had to, has to be planned and announced. It's not a problem that there is error, but we need to announce it. Is that okay for you to, to keep the next track, Hervé? Okay. I can assist if you are not uh, feeling to do it alone, no problem. Uh, AKS, add cluster, private gates. So right before Christmas, Hervé successfully finished the spinning up private gates, uh, deploying uh, an empty shell for uh, future infra CI, if, my, if I'm correct. So three weeks ago, I've put quickly that set of uh, task list. So now it has to be worked on. Ever, are you okay to take that as a main issue? Yes. Or are you bored with that topic and you want no, to start no, no. Uh, get to start uh, mentoring no. uh, Stefan on the public gates? No, it, uh, I finally be, be able to finish this. So yeah. Okay. But both of both of your choices are okay. Again, you have the right to be bored by long running task. About long running tasks, a real line repo Jenkins CI org mission. I have to put my hands again on that topic. Um, last news where uh, the repository repo Jenkins CI was merged uh, migrated successfully in December. It's faster than it was before. So thanks a lot for GFrog. We need to do a post migration meeting with GFrog, but uh, due to personal scheduling item, it has been moved to next week. Sorry for that. 
I was able to confirm that the issue I had when setting up uh, repositories on the UI, it looked like it was gone. I have to confirm that, but I tried to change repositories and it was instantly taken in account. So that should ease my task and I have to go back to document it with your help, Mark. I think we need to set up a few, a few uh, pairing session, both of us, to continue the work where we left it middle of December. Yes. Is there any question on that topic? Nope. Okay. So, so I guess one one point I did ask for the report of bandwidth utilization mm -hmm. and support JFrog support has acknowledged that they have received the request and they are working on the request. They've told us they can only give us data since December 18th. And my answer back was, that's perfectly fine. In fact, that's preferred. We would like to know what the current usage is and see if we can identify any guilty parties by IP address or by domain name that we could ban and save bandwidth quickly. We understand yep. that won't be the long-term solution, but if there are easy ones, we want to know about them. Absolutely. Um, the plan here for me on my side is to validate some assumption around how the plugins are built. The goal will be to enable authentication. One of the main infrastructure tasks that I have to work on right now, along with planning and describing tests, is to find if there is a technical so solution to have LDAP replication. So anytime we they start the LDAP, it's available. Otherwise, developer will be impacted with our uh, monolithic LDAP as for today. I found solutions that are working uh, in the context of using virtual machines and uh, huge setups. I have to validate that uh, on Kubernetes. Kubernetes could help as a framework for high availability, but I have to dig more on that topic. Anyone interested can try their, uh, on their own. I uh, will run experiment on a local Kubernetes cluster before, and I will then do a duplicate copy to test during some times before going uh, further. Um, time for the new items. We had a bunch of issues that were open recently. Um, one from Yaroslav from the security team. Uh, due to HSTS, uh, they are having issues with Chrome and not on Firefox. So it seems like there are subtle differences in the way HSTS is handled by web browsers. For trusted CI and third CI, um, there are right now, these two controllers are providing self-signed certificate. Most of us ignore and accept the exception. Due to HSTS on Chrome, it's not possible. Uh, as pointed by team, there is already an LDESC issue open for that. That was about have a valid certificate for trusted CI Jenkins. Why don't we have that right now? Because let's encrypt by default on, on this virtual machine is configured for HTTP challenge, which require let's encrypt to be able to directly access the service while these services are hidden behind VPN or SSH tunnels and no Let's Encrypt certification. Uh, the good news is that Let's Encrypt on these setups with the third bot process, not Kubernetes, is absolutely able to handle DNS validation, which means if we put the correct uh, DNS uh, API uh, credentials, that third bot should be able to validate. Worst case, we can also do it manually, uh, but that will be to be re renewed every few months, so quite the pain. So the goal will be to find a way to configure the Puppet Let's Encrypt module to have the correct credentials with limited accounts. Um, as per team and RV uh, discovered a few months ago, we should be able to create Azure account, technical accounts that are restricted to only a DNS zone. So that should help avoiding issues. But I don't mind having a full DNS uh, manipulation from these machines. Because I mean, if someone access this machine, uh, if an unexpected person or process do it, these machines are accessing things that are way more sensitive than the DNS. 
So we could get started with a full account and then restrict uh, access, but that will solve uh, Yaroslav issues because the certificate presented by these domains will be valid and recognized by every browser. So is there anyone willing to work on that? I can assist or I can take it, I don't mind. Why not? Yeah. Will it be okay given your bandwidth? Because you have quite a big topic around private gates. I don't know. Is that okay if I try to uh, uh, to yeah, set a Stefan as volunteer on that one? I, I, I think we'll push him to this issue. Yeah, sure. yeah you can exactly. push me, but uh, I, I, I will uh, need a lot of your time on that. That's why I didn't ask for it. Yes, push me. Ian. Uh, you're falling in behind the cliff. <laughs> okay, I've added both issues. Uh, Maven 387, that one is perfectly fine for you, Stefan, to handle. See. Now I will have all, everything over the cliff. Uh, so Maven 387 is uh, generally available. It has been merged on the main branch of our Packer images. So now, and on the Windows container templates. So we have to now release the Packer images and let the update CLI pull request open and do their jobs. And once done, we have to communicate to developer that, hey everyone, now Maven 387 is the default version. Just in case if something breaks somewhere, developer won't waste time thinking, oh, my pair build and is sending a word error message. It, okay. And Maven 387 has been verified on Jenkins Core, on the many of the plugins I use, and I'm, I've been using it now for a week or more. So cool. I, I think I think it has a, your, your plan is exactly right and it has a good chance for success. Of course, Stefan, I'm pushing you over the cliff, but you know that uh, we are here to assist. If I can try, anything. as you can see on my name. Um, I'm looking at the new shoes. So account for SMR, renew the, oh, renew the signer certificate. That one oh. is quite important. So as I understand, Stefan and Mark saw during last weekly the following message that say in March, the code signing certificate for Jenkins um, will be expired. Mark, I might need help on this one. Um, is that okay if we set up a, a session only yes. for that? You, Just you to and I share should knowledge? work it. You and I should work it. And then we may actually have to engage Olivier Vanel just because the last time he and I did it was two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. And and anything we do that infrequently, I think there is a runbook entry for it, but even with the runbook entry, it's such old knowledge how to do it that let's pair together to do it. Absolutely. I need oh um I don't think last time I was there already. I think you are the only one, Mark, who was there. Uh, you you, you are correct. You were not. That, that really was Olivier and me. And and I think we involved Kosuke because if I remember correctly, code signing certificates are very, very special. Yep. I think uh, because that requires specific access to the Azure vaults, specific access to a root certificate and specific access to the private key, which is on the private repository. I think all the GitHub organization admin of Jenkins Afra should be able to access the private repo and all the Azure admin should have. So I guess Stefan and Hervé theoretically could have access to the information, but better to check first and follow up the runbook. Any question? Um, I think that's all. Uh, Hervé and Stefan, we discussed yesterday and mentioned eventually uh, Hervé 
uh, monitoring Stefan to start the work on creating the new public uh, network and then the new public cluster. I think public network is almost already done and then create the new Kubernetes cluster. Given all the tasks we just had, do you think you can start working on that next iteration or do you want to wait one iteration more? I think it can be done in parallel. We, we Stephane, you we have... I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure of the time that the task I got right now will take. So we will see, we can, we can still report for one week. On, on next Tuesday, we will see if it's okay for you to have that staying in the in the milestones. Okay, I propose we don't add it to the milestone. No pressure. There, are, there are enough tasks uh, back from holidays, and uh, if you have some time, so both of you, I let you meet, discuss, and start planning, and so then we can start. You can start working if you feel like. Uh, I don't think it. I feel like it's too much on one milestone. So let's see how it behaves for the other task. I don't want to put pressure that's something really sensitive. So I prefer we take time for planning. Hervé, okay. if you feel like uh, you have some time, you can start planning and writing down the steps you feel yeah. like the issue. Is that okay based on your experience on the previous cluster? Um, what do we have? Hold in bound. Tab up for plugin and scoring. Good point. And that one very much, Adrian needs it. Yep. Um, Hervé, should we take it both of us and uh, the first one? Yep. Uh... Sure. Good catch. Thanks. Do we have other planning for supported its documentation for the GDK end of life? We still have until end of month. New repo for Jenkins board, but that one is not on our area. No, and I, I had the topic. I missed bringing it to the board meeting on Monday. I mentioned it there, but only mentioned that I had made the mistake of not bringing it to the board. Sorry about that. So. It, off okay. the list it's it's kept without milestone because it's uh yes uh, of uh, of the usual planning okay plugin site is behind jenkins release tweets i'm not sure yeah but i don't see what we can really do apart oh, from okay. yeah. modifying um, the go tools i'm using to repost to i i don't think it was it Okay, let's keep it there. Okay, no new issues. So I think we are done here. Are there other issues or things you want to to plan for the next milestone or can we get started on this one? Seems cool. Oh. Cool, okay. So then I will update and publish the note as usual. Um, so thanks. See each other next week or during the week. I'm gonna stop recording and then you will be able to speak freely. <laughs> For everyone uh, listening to us, uh, see you next week. Bye bye.